Hi everyone and welcome to the Coupon Project Live. I'm Angela Russell and I'm the blogger behind the Coupon Project. Uh, if you're just joining me, I just wanted to give you a quick little introduction to what I'm all about. I'm based out of the Seattle Tacoma area. I share on my blog deals that I found um, primarily in the Pacific Northwest but lots are nationwide so I do have readers that are outside of the Pacific Northwest. In addition to sharing deals that I find I spend a fair amount of time on my blog teaching, sharing uh, how coupon works, what frugality looks like, I've been doing a lot of do-it-yourself posts, recipes lately, lots of different ways to save. I believe that there's more than one avenue to saving. If you're just joining me, you've never participated on one of these webcasts, I want to welcome you. I just want to point your attention to the chat box that you're seeing below the video. If you log on to your Ustream account or just create a new one, it takes like two minutes, you'll be able to chat along. I am watching that chat box tonight, so I'm able to address your questions and comments live, at least as best I can. Um, so I think that's, that's all I want to say. Oh, the last thing before we get started, this webcast tonight is is being recorded so if you want to come back watch it again later just so you know uh, the video version of tonight's webcast will be on my blog tomorrow as well as posted to my webcast page so if you've missed webcasts and you want to go back and see past ones I have lots of them I think I'm up to like oh gosh maybe 20 or 30 now so uh, you can go back to my webcast page and uh, watch these little videos informative videos about all things couponing and saving money so that being said Let's dive in. Today's topic is one that was sort of born out of a lot of reader questions that I've been getting on how do I get back into couponing? Maybe at one point you were really heavily involved in the coupon and coupons and clipping and going to the stores and scoring great deals and then for whatever reason you fell out of it. And now you're really feeling like Man, I really need to get back into that. So how do you make the leap back in? How do you re-enter? So I'm going to spend some time talking about that tonight. I also want you to know this is sort of a theme that I have going for this month. So every Monday I've been posting um, different topics on how to get back into couponing. I didn't do one today. I should have. I'm a little behind schedule, but I should have another post in the next day or two and then also one next Monday. Um, when thinking about coming back into couponing, I think it's really important to stop and evaluate why you stopped in the first place. Um, I think there's two main categories of reasons. The first is you just needed a break and if this is the case I just think you shouldn't be hard on yourself. There's all sorts of reasons why maybe you just need to take a break from doing this and just to be released to do that without guilt. Maybe you had a baby. Maybe there were family upheavals or emergencies that you had to deal with. Um, there, maybe you moved, maybe something changed with your family lifestyle. Sometimes other things just um, come about that are more important, quite frankly. And if that's if that's the situation, then shoot, I wouldn't feel guilty about it. Sometimes you just need to take care of other things. Um, but on the on the flip side of that, there's another category where I think you would want to pay a little bit more attention. So. Let's say you didn't have one of these major life events, but for whatever reason you got tired, you got burnt out, you were just exhausted. If you left for one of those reasons, I would definitely take some time to evaluate, well, what didn't work? What was not working the first time? You know, and why, you know, obviously you want to get back into it, but if you want to get back into it and something wasn't working, you've got to figure out what wasn't working. So it's not just like you know, my analogy of doing the laundry, right, where you're just like every week there's like Mount, <laughs> Mount Laundry there, you know, maybe at some point it's a good idea to, to find a better system, a, a different method. So I'm going to be talking about some ideas for that tonight. I also want to say no matter what your reason was for, for stepping back out of clipping coupons and um, saving money, um, I just want to give you permission that you, this may take a while to get back into, don't be afraid to build slowly. In fact, maybe the reason you crashed and burned because is you were going too fast to begin with the first time. So give yourself permission to build slowly and also give yourself permission to let your new journey be different than the one you were on before. I think a lot of times people think they're just going to go right back into it and pick up where they left off, but stuff has changed. So it's okay if things look different this time around. So let's talk a little bit more now about starting back up again, what that looks like. 
um, and, and what's changed. So in thinking about starting back up with couponing, I like to think, okay, well, what changed with me and what's changed with the coupon scene, right? So it's important to reflect on how you've changed. Quite frankly, I'm hearing more and more um, readers are changing their diets. Maybe they're trying to lose weight or maybe uh, maybe you were following me when I was doing um, my plant-based diet and you know maybe you're more interested in whole foods or organic, maybe you're paleo, maybe you're trying to use more eco-friendly products. It's very possible that your lifestyle has changed. So maybe the things that you're now going to look to use coupons are um, on may look different. Um, also it's possible if suppose you've moved um, that your storage needs, your pantry needs are different. If you've been out of it for a while, it's possible your stockpile is depleted. So just assess, okay, what, what is it that my lifestyle looks like now? What is it that I need to achieve now? Consider how you've changed since you last did this. Um, and, and also I want to say, don't let coup coupons ever dictate what you must or must not buy. I think some of the problem is, People will look at the coupons and they'll use them sort of as their list. They'll kind of cut out the coupons and they'll go to the store and let the coupons inform them what the deals are instead of saying, here's the things that would really help my family. Here's the things that would matter to my family to have in my pantry. And then find ways to save from that angle. So you be in control of the coupons. Don't let the coupons control you is what I'm trying to say there. So assess first what, what is it that matters to you with your lifestyle now. The second really important thing that I want to talk about tonight is look at how stores have changed. If you've been out of this for a while, a lot has happened. Um, after um, extreme couponing, we saw a lot of people just really interested in, in learning how to do this. I mean, there was kind of a surge growing before that, but that sort of was the tipping point, it would seem. And um, after that show, just lots of people wanted to learn how to do this. Uh, we saw a huge surge of people going into the stores and, you know, for, for better, for worse. So I don't want to just say, oh, you know, just brought about bad stuff. Because quite frankly, everybody needs to learn how to save money, right? We're still, so far as I can see, in the recession, people are still, you know, going to try to find ways to pitch pennies. So what we saw is all these people now going into the stores trying to figure this out. And the stores have responded. So if you've not been in your stores for a while, not just shopping, but from shopping as a couponer, you really need to figure out what what's the scene with those stores that you're shopping at. What I've seen is that many stores have responded by putting coupon policies online, and we're talking about stores that had never really had coupon policies or never had them published. They're now really making an effort to control the quantities of deals that people are getting so that more people can take advantage of the deals that are out there. And this does mean that there's more transparency. I think that this is actually a very positive thing. I know there's been some whining from people that um, that have been in this for a while, but I see if I know what the rules are, if I know what the policies are, then it makes my job easier in the store. It makes the store's job easier to enforce it. And when the quantities end up being limited, that means more people can take advantage of the deal. And again, my whole philosophy on stockpiling is do it slowly, do it, do it over time. Anyhow, so I think it's a positive thing that more people can take advantage of the deal. So I think no matter what store it is that you're shopping at, sort of like kind of an overarching theme that we've been seeing over the last year is stores be more transparent sharing what those policies are. A lot of the policies have worked to limit the number of um, deals. And by that, I mean specifically light coupons. Many stores are now limiting the number of light coupons that you can use in a single transaction. Now, this isn't all you know, restrictive news either. There, we've also seen some stores take a competitive stance now that they realize, wow, there's a lot of shoppers out there that really want to use coupons. There has, on the flip side, been, I would say, a competitive stance between some stores saying, well, we want those shoppers here. So for instance, Albertsons offering overage now. Um, Walgreens now offers buy one, get one free coupons, a buy one, get one free sale. So we've definitely seen some positive changes that would encourage really great deals happening at their stores too. And that's to your advantage to figure out, okay, well, what are those changes that have taken place? Because you could be missing out on opportunities if you don't know what those policies are. Um, I have on my page, in fact, I'll, um, 
if you give me a second here, let me bring up my, my site and I will add a link in the chat to uh, the policy pages. Now these pages, or this page has the coupon policies for stores in my area and stores that I report deals on. So you're looking at Albertsons, Fred Meyer, but there are a few national chains in there like Target, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. So this, this is supposed to just sort of point you in the right direction of what are some of the current coupon policies that are out there. But I recommend take the time to figure out, okay, what are the stores that I'm going to be shopping at? Are they the same ones? Or maybe I want to try some new ones and get a current copy of the coupon policy. Read it and read it carefully. Sometimes there'll be just a line in there that will change everything. Well, completely changed the way that you would do a deal scenario, even from a year ago. So do pay attention to what those new coupon policies are. Um, the other thing that I would say, I noticed, and maybe this is more so my perspective as a coupon blogger, but I've seen the stores just really sort of extend their hand more to shoppers, like and specifically what I mean to shoppers, like coupon shoppers, people like me, people that are really interested in saving um, money, getting the very best value, getting the very best deal. I've seen um, more that they want to work with us than the opposite. And I really sort of reject the stance, the attitude that couponing is a game where the stores are some opponent that you've got to take out. Call me crazy, but I've taken the opposite stance and I really see stores as an ally. Someone, you know, the, the stores are the ones that give me the deals and I want those deals to be around for a long time to come. So I've really worked hard to build positive relationships with the stores I, uh, that I frequent at. One thing I always say in my coupon classes is long-term relationships with stores always trump individual transactions. So that's that's my little that's my little saying and I do think it's I do think it's true the more that you can work to build those relationships the better you're going to be long term and I really do see the stores saying yes we want to have those relationships we want you know we really want you to um, to feel like you could use your coupons here and um, you know within these parameters of course I mean let's not let's not kid ourselves coupon fraud is a real thing but for the ones that want to have those deals and and do them legitimately the stores are definitely there to help us get those deals. Um, now that I've talked about changes, um, assessing the changes that have happened, the stores assessing the changes that have happened with you, I wanted just to give you some quick tips for um, for how to enter. So I sort of did some brainstorming and, and in thinking, okay, how could you get back into couponing if you've been out of it for a while and not again have it be like, you know, the laundry has piled up for three weeks and now I've got to, you know, start over. Now you're like, oh, I know I, you're, you know, getting back to the gym. Maybe if you've not worked out for a month, you're like, oh, I know I need to do this. You know, I really want you just to be excited about getting back into it. If it's something that you feel like you really need to be doing. So give yourself the fresh start, do whatever you need to do to make it fresh and fun again. So here's some ideas for how you might do that. First, start with your goals or but and budget. Instead of just starting to, you know, subscribe to a ton of blogs again and start cutting coupons and going to coupons.com, before you do any of that, let's try something different. This time, sit down and figure out what do I want to achieve long term? Big picture. I'm a big picture thinker. I always love thinking, okay, what is the big picture of that I'm trying to achieve? And then begin to add the coupons in, begin to add the stores and everything else in to work towards that big goal. So figure out what what is it that you're spending right now at the grocery store and what would you like to be spending? And I'm in favor of doing like a graduated um, plan to getting to spending. So for instance, let's suppose you're spending $500 and you'd like to get to 300. Maybe instead of having your next month's goal be 300, maybe knock it down to like 475, 450 even. Make it realistic make get you've got to give yourself some quick wins and you've got to adapt if you if you make it too difficult you're going to set yourself for failure but definitely figure out okay what is it i want to achieve this time with couponing what do what is the goal that i'm working towards so think about what your goals are what what is your budget uh, maybe you have a savings goal that you'd like to achieve but again even there like I'm always more a fan of sticking with your budget than achieving like say a 70% savings, right? So, you know, but you know, definitely saying I'd like to save 30, 40% to start might be a really great goal to shoot for. 
If you're not sure how to set up goals or what that would look like, let me just make a little plug for my savings tracker. Again, I'll pull up a, a link and throw it in the chat for, um, for those of you that are chatting with me um, there. Um, I started this savings tracker. I made it as a free uh, download. Oh gosh. Uh, maybe three years ago now and it's completely free it's for Excel there's also one for Google Docs for those of you that don't have Excel and what you can do is you can input your the the amount of money that you'd like to spend for your budget for your groceries for each month and then as you come back from the grocery store with your receipts you can do this every time you shop or maybe you just collect the receipts and then once a week or once every few days whatever you'll go ahead and enter your data from your receipts into the tracker for the appropriate month and it will all roll up. So you'll begin to see exactly how much coupons are saving you, store sales, and most importantly, uh, the variance to your budget. So how much you are spending uh, as compared against your, your budget each month. Why is this important? I've had a lot of people tell me they were maybe on the verge of quitting or they were getting discouraged. They felt like they weren't getting anywhere and by just doing this, inputting the data, they began to see the trees through the forest and they were like, wow, I am saving 50%. Oh, wow, I saved $300. So they're they're able to see exactly the bigger picture. Remember, <laughs> I'm the bigger picture girl. So if this might be a really good way um, if you're starting back in to motivate yourself to see exactly what it is that you're you're achieving. So that is the savings tracker. So I definitely recommend that um, if you're starting back up. So try with some goals. Try, try measuring how you're actually doing with those goals and making them realistic. Also, another idea for you getting back in is to start a new routine. So one thing that I've been doing that has been really helpful is when I plan, I try to do everything all at once. I'm all about like minimizing time and making things simple, not adding systems but sort of paring them down so when I clip my coupons and I'm planning my grocery list for the week I'm also planning my meals so if you can think about planning your meals around the deals that are on sale I mean this is something I've talked about since the inception of my blog um, but planning what's okay what sort of produce is in season what sort of meat is on sale and then build your meals around those then you can begin to combine your grocery trips your coupon trips the time you you spend gathering your coupons so you're planning everything all at once you're making it simpler so you're saving money and time as you're you know you're not doing okay now we're going to spend time doing coupons now we're going to spend time planning the meals you can start br bringing it together so my advice for you just starting back up into this is think about how can you create a new routine how can you create a new way of bringing couponing and finding those deals back into the routines that maybe you already have in place or maybe you create a new one um, for yourself another idea I have um, find some new stores to shop at I know some people Maybe they got really burnt out on drugstores. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm just sick of doing all these transactions. I'm done with couponing. Maybe it's not couponing that isn't working for you. Maybe it's couponing at the drugstores that's not working for you. Maybe you just need to say, you know, forget it with rolling register rewards and, and all of that. I just need to, even if I'm not getting the best deal, maybe I could shop at a store like Target or maybe I could shop at a store like Fred Meyer where maybe I'm paying a little bit more than the direct stores but I'm getting it all done in one transaction and I'm still saving more money than I am now. So my suggestion is if there were certain stores that were bumming you out, try some new ones. In fact, that's just good advice in general in my opinion. If just to get yourself out of a rut, just to make sure that you're aware of all the different savings avail savings options that are available to you, get out there and try some new stores. Also, if you had some bad experiences at particular stores, you might try different stores within the same chain. For instance, if there's a Walgreens in your area that's giving you grief, maybe try the Walgreens that's a few minutes across town. It may be, it, you might have a different experience and you might find that it's worth it to have that connection uh, for the next time that there's a really great deal that you want to take advantage of. Okay, I have just a couple more quick tips on getting back into couponing. 
Uh, the next one is new coupon organization with a fresh start. You know, think about like going back to school. You know, you got a new binder and you got a new lunchbox. So maybe what you need to do instead of like trying to resuscitate your old coupon binders from the dead, maybe it's time to get a cute coupon box. Maybe it's time to get some folders and file. Maybe it's just time to get a new method, um, a new new fresh start. So think about different ways that you might do that. Um, this is my next tip is probably my big one of my biggest ones and that's subscribe to the newspaper. I know it sounds really simple, but I can't stress it enough. I remember there was a time that I was really struggling in keeping up with the couponing because it just felt like one more thing to do. And I ended up subscribing, surprise, to the very deal that I write about all the time, which is the Tacoma News Tribune special, which I'll, I'll throw up a link um, to that too in the chat box for those that are interested. And um, I cannot believe the difference it made. Um, for me just to know that like Sunday morning was when I opened my door, um, the coupons are right there. I'm not having to drive around. I'm not having to worry on a big coupon day if I'm going to get my coupons or not. They're just there. And if I can't get around to cutting them right away, it's okay. They're, you know, they're there. Um, I really can't stress that enough. Uh, the deal uh, for my locals is actually a really, really strong one. It's $1.25 per paper, uh, and that's per Sunday paper when you buy three or more copies. So, um, it's definitely worth it's definitely worth considering and you know sometimes I think it's worth worth these things to make to make our lives more convenient to make things easier and definitely having the subscription was one thing that um, has made couponing more doable for me long term and you know what I find and I and I say this to all my coupon classes you know I don't use all of the coupons that I get but even using the ones I do, I come out more than ahead, and I know that because of the savings tracker. But you, you know, I just clip a few that are really high value, and you've already paid for. It. I mean, it's more than paid for itself right there. Um, so do consider subscribing if that's um, if if you found that you were burnt out or tired of driving around um, in your previous coupon journey. Definitely consider uh, a newspaper subscription. And the last thing I want to um, talk about and maybe this sounds strange um, because I am a frugal living blogger and you know of course I want you to subscribe to my blog but you know I also care about you finding the ways that um, make sense for you to save so I always t like to say you know be judicious in the blogs that you follow it can be really easy when you're just getting started to follow a whole slew of them and that can be great but it can also be overwhelming if you don't have an easy way to manage that so be judicious figure out um, you know are, are these bloggers talking about stores that you shop at and that you care about do these bloggers have diets or lifestyles that you want to emulate or not um, do the bloggers I mean what is it they care about or report about um, do these things do these things resonate with you so be judicious maybe you know maybe you pared down the amount that you follow um, and the sites that you follow because it's so easy to get bombarded with deal sites and coupon sites and coupon blogs so maybe you need to pare things down and um, so so take some time and uh, maybe you need to find some new ones too I mean there are new ones that pop up all the time maybe it's worth it to do a quick search you know to to Google for coupon blogs that talk about the stores that you shop at and um, find ones that will help you um, get the deals that you need in a way that makes sense to you. So that's what I have tonight. It doesn't look, let's see, why is everything censored? I am not sure what's, I'm not sure what's being censored. If you, uh, P-E-T-Z-1-2-3-5, if you can um, um, tell me what's going on. I'm not. I'm not sure if there's some sort of problem with the chat or the video. Please, please do let me know. I'm. I'm certainly not sitting here censoring anything. Um, I guess the last thing I want to. Um, the last thing I want to say tonight is that just to give yourself permission to make your new coupon journey be what it is. Stuff has changed. Your lifestyle has likely changed. The the stores that you've shopped at have likely changed. And maybe what you need to do to get back into this long term is going to look different. So I hope that you will find your new journey 
will be fun and refreshing and that it will be something that you can do uh, for the long term. I'm going to close the webcast for now. I am going to leave the chat up for a bit. Um, so feel free if you have questions or comments. I'll be hanging out on the chat box for a few minutes following the conclusion of the webcast and I'll also have the video up tomorrow. And do make sure to join me um, on the blog where I've been talking about specific topics with getting back into couponing after a break. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great evening.